Hello everyone, Dave Lander here from DaveLander.com. This is the week and charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for being here tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. So what are we talk about? Well, current market conditions, I'm going to have a lot to say about that. I just don't like where we are at this juncture. And go back about a week, you're like, but Dave, I thought you liked the markets. Eh, well, that's why I always say one day at a time. Your questions on trading, obviously. And your stock and crypto picks. If uh, you do want to look at any crypto, just put a dollar sign in front of it so I don't get it mixed up. And also, I guess starting tonight, we can look at Canadian stocks. Now, somebody in a Facebook group posted that they had a bad first year. I don't know if you're here or not tonight, but I started to address this. And I realize it's going to take a lot more than just one program. So I think we're just kind of scratching the surface here, but we'll dig into that. And the bottom line is don't stress, there is hope. Before we get into all that, there's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading, or as often summing up, all predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. All right. So one of the questions that was asked is how long does it take to become successful? become a successful trader that is and the first question that came to my mind was how many setups and systems and markets and time frames are you trading if you're trading one setup in one market you might be successful after a few weeks and you might be successful forever if you're trying to do a whole bunch of different things then it might take a little longer and I'll flesh that out in just a few seconds. Now, one thing I thought about that I forgot to ask was how long did it take you to become successful in your current or prior career? And often I've done presentations where I talk about how there is no, what's the word for it? Career path, so to speak, to become a successful trader. If you want to become a doctor, a lawyer, or automatic transmission mechanic, there are steps you can take. If you want to fly airplanes, there are steps you can take. You go to class for a while, and then you slowly work your way into a real, air, real airplane, and obviously somebody helps you along the way. And when I've done these presentations, one of the things I talked about was becoming a, a plumber there's a defined career path you become a journeyman for so many years and then you take the master plumber exam and there's a dozen or so other steps that i'm leaving out i know someone who quit the business he was in years ago to become a plumber and he's a plumber but i just don't know i don't know if he's become a master plumber yet or taken the master plumber exam and that was oh geez probably 15 years ago so it does take a while but it'll take a lot longer if you're trying to do everything, believe me. Now, along the lines of trying to do everything, less is more. All things constant, which of course they won't be because markets change constantly, right? The only thing constant is change. But reducing size will at least have you losing less. If you do the same exact thing last year, but you reduce your size, maybe you'll lose half as much okay but the point i'm trying to make is it'll put you closer to that path of profitability getting out of the negative column or approaching that uh, at least approaching zero a little bit but obviously all things aren't constant so one thing that you definitely want to do is maybe focus on one particular setup or one pattern and just trade that one pattern and get really, really, really good at it. And one of the things that I wanna get into, and maybe we can get into this a little bit next week, is that you really wanna be confident in your methodology and what you're doing. And, and when I start doing some new things like the intraday trading and some other stuff, I get really stressed out sometimes, of course, when I lose money. And the thing that I have to remind myself is I've been doing the trend following moron stuff for 30 years. And I pretty much know what to do with that. Okay, this is a setup, it's a pullback, I'm gonna get in here. I like the setup for these particular reasons. It's persisting in its trend, it's nice accelerating trend, it's got a pullback. But going in and trying to do some intraday trading, it's a little bit different. 
and because I haven't been doing that for 30 years. Now I've been doing certain things like ogres and stuff like that, but you get the idea. Now, a lot of introspection, he tried to say, will really, really, really help. And I was talking about this a little bit in the Facebook group, but separate all those trading styles out and those time frames out and those markets out and those styles out into piles. And then ask yourself, were any profitable for the year, nearly profitable? And then the other thing to ask yourself is, were any very unprofitable? As I've told the story ad nauseum, beat the dead horse. So I'll give you the Reader's Digest version. Had a client, was not making money with the trading service. Not that it always works, but it always works. If it always worked, maybe you never see my fat ass again. Uh, but it has good times and bad times like anything, right? And as I was saying at Facebook, we were talking about this a little while earlier, a lot of styles will begin to look the same. If you're doing some trend following, it's going to start to look a lot the same, like a lot of the patterns. And I think the edge, so to speak, comes in with getting better at the stock selection. And that's that's one way where maybe I do have an edge. But as far as the setups in and of themselves or the system in and of themselves, like the TFM 10% system, for instance, that's going to look like a lot of other trend following systems. But anyway, getting back to the story real quick, a client insisted that I log into his trading account or look at a spreadsheet of all the results or whatever, download a spreadsheet. And so I did all that and I separated all, all the trades that were for my trading service. And again, as I often say, nothing in the grand boom bob because we do have bad times in the trading service, just like anything out there. There, there will be blood, right? But the thing I noticed was he took every single trade, he followed the system to a T, the methodology to a T. And over this period of time, as I've said a thousand times, again, I need to stop apologizing for repeating myself, but I know some of your eyes are glazing over now. But as I've said before, I said, good news. We made a little bit of money over that period of time with the trading service. And I see you took all the setups in the trading service and you followed all the directions from the trading service. And you actually made money. So you've proven that you can make money doing that. The reason you lost money were these 20 or so day trades over here in this one particular stock. And he immediately said, I know, I know, I know. So he knew what he was doing wrong. And just by taking out that one little piece, he would have been successful. Now, I don't know how the service did after that. But let's say the service did okay over the next six weeks or whatever, or six months or six years. <laughs> God, it's probably been six years since this happened. Then he's probably been successful since, and I know he's been successful. So you need to identify if there's anything that you, you shouldn't be doing or if you're just trying to do too much. And I know we all get excited. We want to do everything. We're all set up junkies. And it's hard not to, to be that way. But sometimes, and almost all the times, less is more. I would be having an amazing week if I didn't, if I hadn't traded traded today. <laughs> you know, laugh to keep from crying. So introspection, very, very, very important. Now, as I was putting together these slides, I was thinking, as I said a minute ago, there's so much to be said here. Okay. And it's more than I can cover in just one webinar, but a little bit's going to come out throughout. And as I started looking at previous slideshows I, I did, before I knew it, I was grabbing this slide and grabbing that slide. And I said, well, hang on, Dave. Maybe redo some of those presentations and then reference them back to what we're covering tonight because there's so much stuff in those and some of those quotes will come out tonight. But the thing is, did you research the hell out of a setup and play devil's advocate? or did you try it out five minutes after you learned about it? Now, where I'm going here is you need to have confidence in your methodology, so much confidence to where you just do what has to be done when it has to be done. And one way you can get that for free, obviously, is to do a boatload of research in a and the most important thing you do is play devil's advocate when of course we all look for when it works but look for when it doesn't work look for when you get chewed up and doing that and once you get to that level of confidence you'll it will be like mark douglas said 
what you fear is not the markets, but your inability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. And that will take some experience and that will take some confidence. Now, I talked about, do I have it here still? I was reading it today again. Dalio's principles and one reoccurring theme throughout the book. In fact, I actually would have had bought the Kindle book because I was having such a hard time going through his book to find things I was looking for. But he talks about another one of those. And you come across a situation in trading or in life, and it's like, okay, it's another one of those. Like my dad used to say, we've been down this road before, you know? <laughs> so recognize if it's another one of those and what you do in that situation. And I'm guilty, and you know, I'll go first. It's like I didn't realize there were a Fed, there was a Fed announcement this week. I noticed everything was just kind of chopping around. I lost money all morning on Wednesday. And then all of a sudden the market started doing its gyrations. I said, ah, must have been some sort of Fed announcement or something. And if I would have had a procedure in place, because it's another one of those, another one of those times that I that I traded intraday, especially in something like S P futures, where there's some sort of big announcement and the market just zigs back and forth. Fortunately, I was able to follow it down. And I did pretty damn good yesterday. Unfortunately, usually when I have a huge day on the intraday stuff and the market makes a nice wide range bar and has like those holy grail days that are so elusive and we're always talking about them or I'm, I'm often talking about them, I should say. Whenever I knock it out of the park, it's almost like I need to just take the next day off <laughs> or just trade at a tiny, tiny size because it seems like the day after the market just chops, 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 chops. And doesn't matter how much you make, it matters how much you, you keep, right? So that was, I just gave you a couple of, another one of those for me. And I need to really work hard to, to make procedures for those. So when you start recognizing, oh, another one of those, okay, another one of those setups I just learned five minutes ago, but for shits and giggles, I thought I would go ahead, go ahead and try it. Or it's another case where I'm trading not to lose. I'm going to get in and put a little tiny stop, see what happens. Well, guess what? The noise alone is going to take you out, out. And a lot of times, maybe you won't place that stop before you know it. A trade you thought you can get in and just piss away 50 bucks. Worst case scenario, you're down $500 or more. So it's easy to just say, make a plan, follow that plan. It's a lot harder to do it. But the more you work, to put together a trading plan now, especially with the core methodology. And as I preach ad nauseum, it's a lot easier for me to follow the service than it is for me to do some of the trading I do outside of the service, the Russian dolls, the uh, opening gap reversals, although I'm a pretty good, pretty good at the opening gap reversals, except another one of those there. And, and boy, I tell you, it's, you know, it's all coming out, right? <laughs> the mission of guilt here. But another one of those there is I took one a couple of days ago. I can't remember what it was. But it was a little bit thinner and it wasn't quite perfect. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to take it. And and I think that might have been me trading out of maybe necessity, trying to make a little money and, you know, create money where there is none to pay for some of the projects around here or whatever. And, and it's like a new going in. It's like this thing is kind of mediocre. So maybe part of my procedure for that is is like, OK, here's an opening gap reversal. Am I feeling F yeah, or am I just trading because I want to try to make some money or I need some money or I'm bored or looking for recreation or whatever? Or is this an F yeah opening gap reversal that I must take, okay? Versus a mistake type of trade. And I'm going to drag up an old slide on that too. So maybe that could be one of my procedures to avoid another one of those is to say, okay, Dave, do you have solid, solid volume on this opening gap reversal? Is it a big, thick stock, okay? Is it a big, well-known, thick stock that has a shit ton of institutional support? I think I did okay a while back on NVIDIA. It might be one example of that. I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. And I'll try to get better at throwing them out in Facebook. Sometimes everything's such a whirlwind right around the open. I forget to throw them out in the Facebook group. 
But anyway, make procedures or just don't do that and then create commitment devices. The commitment devices can really be little simple things, uh, not exactly a commitment device, but it does stop me from getting too caught up in whatever or surfing the web or watching YouTube or whatever right when when I need to be doing some work near the open. So I set an alarm every day to go off five minutes before the open. And you'd be surprised how many times I'm off doing something or off on some tangent because there's so many shiny objects, right? And I hear that alarm go off and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, let me focus. Let me go see what the opening gap reversals are or whatever else. So commitment devices are a good thing. Another one of those for me, boy, and I tell you what, I'm I'm just admitting a lot of guilt. I'll go to lunch, and when I come back from lunch, I guess I'm feeling good, my belly's full, everything looks good all of a sudden, right? You walk back in the office, I call it the walk in the office trade. Seems like I'll walk in the office, immediately jump on my screens and start trading, even though I shouldn't be, right? So, you know, maybe a commitment device there is, and it's one thing I've been doing is, okay, I write down on my on my trading journal that, hey, I just came in from lunch. This is a walk in the office trade. It's kind of like, doctor, doctor, hurts when I do that. Don't do that, right? So just make commitment devices. A commitment device for me, for instance, you know, you could do these outside of your life, obviously. I have a couple of buddies and we all work out together, believe it or not, I do work out. And it's like, I know that if I don't go, they're gonna give me a hard time, right? It's like, uh, well, you know, Jocko didn't miss his workout today, you know, stuff like that. As I as I said before, a friend of mine, trader, getting a little pudgy, his commitment device was he paid a kid to take him to the gym every day and he paid the kid's gym membership. And then he also said, hey, if I'm not on my front porch at 7 a.m. waiting for you to pick me up, I'm gonna give you $20 for every day. So some sort of commitment device like that, and there are plenty you can do in trading once you start identifying another one of those. IMO, you will likely know you made it when you take everything you've learned and make it your own. It hits you like a ton of bricks. Yeah, and that's the thing, I agree. It's like you, 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 you do need to make it your own. And if something really, really clicks with you and makes a lot of sense, then my, by all means, use that, okay? And it's like less is more. I, I, as you, I don't know who got, uh, I sent them out randomly, but I boxed up boxes and boxes and boxes of books. And it was probably like 10 boxes of books. And it's like, well, I learned a lot from all these books, but it was just too much and I downsized my office and it was a lot of clutter in the office and still was a lot of clutter but it's like less is more so all that kind of makes you who you are but then you have to develop your own style your own feel you have to do what's right for you and to your point I have a client that scouts I have there's another one of you that's a really active trader and and truth be told and here's another one of those a lot of times I kind of get sucked into that hyperactive trading well that's not me okay and but i can get sucked into it really 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 easily now let me just go through this real quick and here's a couple of things and, and as i said earlier when i started putting together this presentation there were so many slides that i wanted to grab we'd be here all night, okay? So a lot of this is gonna come out, I'm gonna think back to today's topic and talk about some of these things, but I thought this slide was really, really relevant. And it's a good process to go through, okay? And I often talk about the post-mortem, but I think just as important or more important is the pre-mortem and the pre-mortem will often stop you from putting that capital into harm's way, okay? So there's the must-take trade and the mistake trade. And on the must-take trade, obviously if you have a positive outcome, you're gonna feel good and you do your post-mortem and you're like, you know what? 
that's a trade I should have been taking, should have taken. You know, check your ego and make sure you avoid the next mistake trade, okay? I don't want to talk too much about day trading, but obviously, like I said, I did a lot of trades on Wednesday. I kind of knocked the cover off the ball and then I kind of gave everything back today. Why? Well, I'm full of myself. I'm Dave Landry, right? <laughs> you know? And it covered the day and kind of like it, it just, you know, couldn't hit the side of the barn. Well, it's a choppy day after a nice trend day. It's another one of those. Now, you have a negative outcome from a trade you should have taken. That's fine. And if you do your postmortem, as we discuss quite often, and you think, you know what? If I saw the same exact trade tomorrow, I would take it. And I think that's one of the true epiphanies that that you will have if you're newer to trading when you're looking at that negative outcome from that trade that you should have taken and did take and you say you know what i don't care if i saw this again tomorrow i would take it and i try really hard in the service to do that kind of time travel and, and like make sure I would see it as if I was seeing it for the first time after the trade is done. In other words, a week from now or six weeks from now, if I come back and look at this trade, even though it didn't work out, this potential trade at the time, would I still have taken it? Okay. And if you answer yes, that's when you got it. Okay. You're 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 there. Now the danger is the mistake trade where you are not really thinking about your future self. And that, that's where the, the uh, Croatia comes in. And I may have stolen this slide or borrowed this slide. It's my own slides, damn it. I can take what I want. <laughs> borrowed it from my Acrasia presentation where a lot of times, and, and you know, I'm guilty too, but a lot of times you're stealing from your future self by taking these mediocre trades, by trading for recreation, by trying to trade 10 different systems and 10 different methodologies and 10 different markets and 10 different market conditions and so on and so forth. Now, obviously you can have a positive or negative outcome. If it's positive, you're always gonna have good feelings from a positive, but when you do, when you do your postmortem, and this is when the, I said the true enlightenment is when the, you're up here with a negative outcome and you do the same thing again. That's what you should do, right? But then you feel like, hey, I'm a market guy. This was great. And that's when you could end up in a negative feedback loop, okay? And that's really, really, really dangerous. And that's going to put you, again, taking those trades over and over again. Now, if it has a negative outcome and has frustration and you do a postmortem and you're thinking, stupid, right? You really feel like, I can't believe I did that. Another one of those, right? Okay. Then that's likely to put you more over here because you're going to say, okay, I need to do that time travel and I need to think about future Dave. And as I've said before, is current Dave going to make future Dave pissed off? You know, and I probably should, I've got little three by five cards in front of me with notes on them and stuff that I keep. It's funny how you put all these notes and they work for about a week and then after that you stop looking at them. But maybe I need to have a little card over on my trade station that says, is present Dave going to make future Dave pissed off, okay? And maybe in general in life, we should say these things, okay? It's like I have it. I haven't had a drink in a while, and it's like, you know, tomorrow night, is present Dave going to make future Dave pissed off? And, and think about those the situations and, and thoughts throughout life. Think about that future self. And then it all goes back to Acrasia. And I'll see if I can parse some of that Acrasia stuff out so you guys don't, go have, to, don't have to go looking for it. By the way, I started a, 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 a quick clip, uh, quick clips for trading, and I put those on YouTube. And you guys have everything. Most everybody here is on a, a member, a gold member at least. So you have all that stuff on the back end of the website. But if you're newer to me, newer to the channel, I'm starting to parse this out because there's, there's tons and tons of comment 
comment of content. And I know it's kind of hard to figure out what's what. Now, don't beat yourself up, but do work to get better. And another slide that I wanted to put in this presentation, but it, it's, it was a, another presentation, just so much going on, right? To, to put it all in one presentation. But on every action, is, it, is this action moving you toward or away from your goal, okay? I knew that mediocre opening gap reversal or ogre as we now call them trade was mediocre, but I felt like, hey, I just need to take it, right? I need to take it because I need I need some money. The pool guy's gonna be here any week, right? I need some money to pay for that pool. But what I should have said was, okay, is present Dave gonna make future Dave mad if he loses money, especially because he has to pay for a pool? Now, one thing that I really want to drive the point home on, and I think I've actually seen this after I thought about it or read it somewhere maybe, but I, I know it was in one of the market wizards or whatever. But this is especially true when it comes to trading. I don't know about the rest of your life or the careers or anything, but it's especially true when it comes to trading. Your current lack of success has nothing to do with your longer term success. In fact, I would say it's often quite the contrary. I have worked with some individuals over the years who right out the box did some amazing things. And in several cases, I asked these people to, or suggested I should say, you know, one case, pay off your condo. Okay, if you're that great of a trader, then keep a couple hundred K or whatever and and turn that couple hundred K into a million dollars again or whatever, right? Oh, no, it's I, 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 whatever. <laughs> you know, one case, a friend to buy, a close friend to buy, he, he turned, as I often say, especially when I speak in person, I, I tell, tell all the stories, but he turned $5,000, which I later would find out was of questionable origin into roughly a million and i saw one of the statements i think it was a 975 if memory serves and i told him and this was back when interest rates were still high i know annuities not a probably not a good investment but there's something out there you can do to put you know nine hundred thousand dollars into some sort of income type of investment and you know back then Inflation went as high as it was now, and he could make, I don't know what, maybe $50,000, $60,000, $70,000 a year, whatever, in some kind of vehicle like this, which was enough for him to live on. He had kind of fairly meager ways. And I said, just just do that. That You have an income guaranteed for the rest of your life, and if you're that great, take that other hundred k and parlay it again. And he said, I'm not going to take trading advice from you. I was like, well, okay. <laughs> anyway. So again, your current or prior success isn't always indicative of your future success. I mean, I can think of another case where there's actually a few people came in to my trading service, and usually people just don't short. But I had one or two guys came in, come in, and and it was right around the end of 2007, and they shorted with both fists. They just followed along, and then. I don't know how, because that's kind of hard. I've never seen it happen up until then where people, where I show shorts, they actually take them, <laughs> you know, and they just absolutely printed money. Well, when the market began to turn, they couldn't short. I mean, they couldn't go long. They just were so used to playing the short side that it was hard for them to go long. And that's what we talked about last week, but it was working so well the dopamine in your head that gets released when things are going swimmingly, you wanna keep those good vibes going and you wanna keep doing the same thing and not recognize when conditions may have changed. Document, document, document. I am a little lax here. I could do so much more, I know it, but document everything you can as it relates to trading. And I'll tell you what's been a godsend for me, and I know I've been preaching this over and over again, but morning pages. And I did these many years ago before I ever heard of Julia Cameron, 
but I stopped doing them and I started doing them again after reading a little bit of The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. I haven't finished the book, but I started doing my morning pages a few years back. And every morning I wake up and I write three handwritten pages. Try not to think about too much about whether you're writing well or whether you're writing about a topic that's worth writing about. But just get them out. And it gets everything out of your head. And it's one of those things, I was thinking about it before I went live tonight. It's like the hour I spend every morning exercising, even though I lose an hour of my day, it's like I get that hour back somehow, okay? Because I'm more productive. And I guess the first hour a day, I'm kind of groggy and moving around or whatever. If, if I go exercise, then all of a sudden I'm awake, I'm alert, I'm more energetic for the rest of the day. And somehow I... I seem to have gotten that hour back during the day. Morning pages does take a lot of time, but it's gonna get a lot of the stuff that's in your head out of your head. And you know, there's gonna be like a, a lot of those, another one of those. And boy, I tell you what, it's, it's, it's admission uh, night tonight, right? Confession night, I should say. I, last night, had a, had a great day, feeling great. Looked down at my phone, had a head alert that I got a margin call in a crypto account. And I knew I was kind of running kind of thin, but I'm like, eh, it's 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 fine. You know, I got stops in place and stuff and get stopped out, get stopped out. But what I failed to realize was I had an open limit order to cover some shorts, which I covered a month ago, right? And I forgot I had that open limit order on and it was fairly sizable. And it was enough to push me well over the margin limit when it hit. And then it was a forced liquidation, okay? So that's another one of those. Uh, check for any open orders. And I, I'm not gonna make excuses because that's my fault and I did it and I have to own it, right? But the, the lesson there is, the another one of those there is that it's a new brokerage with a new system and it doesn't lend itself that well to the shorting of these crypto pairs because i haven't figured out how to know easily and i think there's one way i'm beginning to learn what you're still short what you need to cover whether or not you covered or not and i need to double check those orders and the problem is all your orders aren't in one spot you got to check different spots but anyway that's another one of those. And so anytime from now on, if I use a new brokerage, I'm gonna make sure I get a feel for how it works before doing anything. One thing, and, and I think we're all, we all get this way a little bit, is don't let false profits get you down. If you get on YouTube and somebody's claiming to do all this great stuff or whatever, you know, it's kind of like the Caddyshack line, you know, no, you don't, Danny. <laughs> Some of these guys are going to jail. So they finally started to crack down on them. And one firm full of those guys, those false prophets, are being sued for $127 million. And it kind of reminds me of this Steve Pressfield quote. He wrote The War of Art, which is obviously a play on the art of war. It's a great little read. It's only about that big. You can read it in one setting. But it's pretty good. Every now and then I'll go in and reread it. Every time I find it, it just gets buried in my bookshelf. But it's a good little book to read. And it, it talks about the resistance you're going to have to overcome. And it's it's really good. And one thing in one of them, the short little paragraphs, like one little paragraph in each page, he said, the counterfeit innovator is wildly self-confident, the real one the real one is scared to death. And I've had the luxury of getting to know a lot of successful traders. And when I, it's funny, when I started my stock chart show, I would, I'd said a few people, because I, I said, oh, you know, Linda Rasky this, or Larry Millen, uh, or whoever, Greg Morris. I mean, I'm, I'm not meaning a name drop now. But anyway, after the show, I said, I said, geez, I hope I didn't name drop too much. And she's like, 
if you know these people and you learn something from these people, then you know there everyone expects you to know these people. Don't feel like you're name dropping, you know. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make there, I do know these people, and none of them act like the people on YouTube, you know. <laughs> so anyway. All traders should have the treasury charts on their screen now. T and X, T Y X. Your trading sounds as impulsive as mine. This is my new issue to work with. Okay. What is treasury? What is a treasury? Treasury. What do what do bonds have to do with the being impulsive? But yeah, we're all we're all occasionally do stupid things. We're all occasionally impulsive, and we do have that discounting of time i guess uh you know maybe i'll become a better maybe i'll become more disciplined tomorrow maybe i can get away with it just this one time and you know i'm kind of backing into all of that um backing into all that equation okay two different two issues one post okay <laughs> yeah that's the thing is that's that's the thing um craig is you know when i when i go to do these presentations it's kind of like Geez, you're gonna sound like an idiot if you say that you were impulsive or you effed up or you did this or you traded for shits and giggles or whatever. But I, I think that's I think that's the life of a real trader. And that's why I don't know if I have it can reach it. That's why I liked uh, Linda Rasky's book, Trading Sardines, because it just seemed like a, a real trader, you know. You're welcome, George. I hope that helps. And and you know, we could uh we could certainly talk. Um, I can carve out a little time. We could talk, but you know, do do some documentation. Send it to me. I'll take a look at it, and we'll uh, we'll figure out what we can do. As I've said a thousand times, and this relates back to the story of the person who was doing a lot of day trading instead of the position trading that he was supposed to be doing, is that you know what you're doing wrong provided you've been doing it for a while now i know you've only been at it for about a year so it might take a little bit longer than that but most people in in fact i've yet to find one pretty much yet where i can't figure out what they're doing wrong and they don't immediately go yeah i know you know so that's what happened in that situation when i tell the story is that you know what you're doing wrong and and this has happened many times as on this one guy thinks i'm gonna pick on him i'm picking on him but he does give me a lot of <laughs> he does give me a lot of fodder but yeah most people once you kind of start needling a little bit or noodle you know needling them a little bit they're like ah yeah i know i i, I shouldn't have done that that was that sucked i shouldn't have done that or that was impulsive that was a day trade or whatever that i shouldn't take it Okay, crypto, boy, not nearly as exciting as it has been. This is a leftover slide. I updated a little bit uh, about a month or so ago, maybe a little longer, so the bloom was off the rose. Man, I tell you, it was painful. I was posting some of those little quick clip videos where I was showing how I was taking little pieces of that crypto off after I hit the initial profit target and just kind of putting it aside for shits and giggles, see what's ha gonna happen to it. A little bit outside of like core methodology, but just seeing that they were all doing so well, what would happen if I just mined, so to speak, 50 bucks off of every trade? And I had one day where I hit like seven of them. I'm like, shit, if I did that every day, <laughs> you know, that's six figures easy a year because it's open 365 days a year. And that's on a small account. But I was just thinking recently, in fact, I wrote it in my morning notes. It's kind of like, boy, I miss those days where you just hit five to seven initial profit targets. So I think the bloom is off the rose. We might be in a, a bear market. We'll take a look at Bitcoin and Ethereum in just one second. If there's any uh, any other pairs you guys want to look at, I'll uh, be happy to pull them up here. Like I said recently, Bitcoin and Ethereum could be a barometer. Kind of like the S and P 500 and the Nasdaq, I guess. The 30-day EMA, I'm really liking that 30-day EMA. I know you know, party with me. And 
I think we're kind of back to most of the core methodology. I've gotten burned a little trying to play that relative strength game lately. And that's one of the, the little caveats that I put when I when I went back and published that video where I was showing how I mined off seven in one day and everything and look at me, you know, I'm the grand blah, blah. But I did put a little disclaimer in there like, hey, things were a lot better than the market was going straight up. And when a market is going straight up, when I say the market, I mean like pretty much everyone in the market, the best thing you could do is just buy the ones that are going straight up with a with a hel healthy, healthy dose of money management. But now it's kind of like more of the core methodology back to being selective. And I think I just need to, to take a step back and then treat them more like the core methodology where I am really, really selective. And you guys in the service are know that know like lately it's been what a couple of weeks since I've shown a setup and I'm just banging out those charts every night trying to find something to trade. And there's nothing there. So I think that's the good news is it's not as much work as it was because when I'm banging out seven profit targets in one day, I'm in and out of here, especially even on the weekends, you know, because they seem to be active on the weekends. So it is a lot, nights, weekends. Less fun, but hey, you know what? We're trading to make money, not have fun, right? But the good news is hopefully that's more sustainable longer term. And as I just said, less work. Now, bigger but fewer losses in general but less attrition and if you are playing that relative strength game and things cool off a little bit you're you're losing a little losing a little losing a little but you're losing on so many pairs your accuracy drops down then that becomes a problem death of a thousand cuts And yeah, there's there's a possible chasing your tail and possible FOMO. All right, let's just take a look at Bitcoin real quick. We could pop out to the live chart. If there's any ones you want to look at, we could pop out to the live chart. Spec, we'll do that anyway. And I'll just flesh out a couple of things. I noticed who was in the group. Um, Sean, I think, in the group posted the this little byline on like a, an ETF which I thought was kind of cool. And I've done that before. This is just, I have it set for 20%. See this 80% here. So it's 80% of the close, 50 days, okay? And like I said, you might use a different parameter in different markets. I thought it'd be kind of cool to use 20% of Bitcoin. And this is on a daily chart off a 50 day high, 50 day closing high, okay? So it'd be this close right here. This is 20% lower, so we're down below that. We've also had Landry lights at the downside, highs less than the moving average. That's all that is. And it's illustrated down here for you. Red, Tarzan speak, bad. Okay, green, Tarzan speak, good, you know. And you can see the combination of these two things can help to keep you on the right side of the market. And down here, this is just a graphical representation of how far the buy line is away from the price, okay? I'm sorry, how far the price has dropped from that 50 week closing high, okay? So you can see 28%. So we're 28% from where we were 50 days ago. Oh, that's kind of interesting. We're way more than 20% away from where we were a little bit longer, maybe, okay? How many is this 50 days? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eh, it's probably about 50 days there. But anyway, I thought that'd be kind of a neat thing to show you that we've been red or mostly red for a long, long time. And we haven't had any green going all the way back to the middle of November. And right around Thanksgiving, I think, was when I had that big day in crypto. I think it might have been on Thanksgiving Day. And then I haven't done as well since. Here's Ethereum. You could see over the same relative time period. You can see we had lots of green here. It was doing pretty darn good. And then it starts chopping back and forth. And it appears to be in a downtrend now. So let me shift gears for a second. Let me just go over the live charts real quick. I'm not going to spend much time there because there's not a whole lot to do. And then we'll go to stocks. So start asking about if you have anyone look at. Start asking about your stock picks. Okay, just a couple things real quick. There's not much left in my portfolio. These are a couple that I'm free rolling on. Back when the market was 
really going, you could probably trade a system like this. And this is why I suggest you go in and study stuff a lot. But the 230 EMA system, I do have a, I do have a quick clip on that. But basically, you're looking for two lows above the 30 EMA, and you could use your favorite EMA, and then look to enter above the high. And I did play this breakout back here when it was high on the list. Cyan means that I got in, I took half profits, and I'm trailing a stop. Here's another one that just was kind of going straight up about a week ago and decided to get in. This one has been pretty amazing and persistent. I know I probably just put the put the Grigory on it, right? But you can see it's just kind of going up since it's broken out, consolidated, going up, going up, going up, going up, going up. And I think I bought on this wide range bar here, kind of nosebleed levels. And in more recent times, you really can't do that as much. And we'll take a look at some of those in one second. I'll show you what I mean. I'm along this one too, probably when it was going up on this bar here. And then I got long this one, kind of anticipating this move higher. I may have gotten in a little too soon. And that's the other thing, too, is I might need to be a lot more selective now. When things were just going up, and you can go in and watch my enthusiasm when, it, when they were, right? When I was all excited about the crypto and the shit coins, right? Well, now it seems to the bloom is off the rose, like I'm saying, okay? Now, I don't know why they don't have all of these versus the dollar. But you can see with these long tails, this one's kind of thin. And that's the other thing I've been working on too lately is I've been looking at that bid ask that a lot of these brokerages have where they show the bids he ask. And I'm looking at the dollar volume in there to see if it would be easy for me to, to get my trades off. Now, I'm not trading huge size in crypto, okay? But you'd be surprised how thin some of these markets could be. So that's something that I'm working on to make sure my markets are thick enough to trade. And as I said a couple of months ago, you used to be able to just come in here and buy the strongest ones, the ones that were going up. But now it's not quite so easy. Okay. So any anything you want, anything, any crypto you guys want to look at right now is not a whole lot to get excited about, believe me. Okay, I got in a coin today. But let's go crypto. It's a it's in a downtrend. What's going up? Energy, financials, industrials, crypto is Missouri mode. Show me. Yeah, and that's the other thing too. And maybe it'll work if I if I change this to negative. But I've done plenty of webinars where I talked about, and I think the charts just flipped over. But I've done plenty of webinars where, you know, I made a lot of money in this one, okay? And then it stopped working, okay? But you can see you've got upside Landry light this whole ride up, and now you've got downside Landry light. So that is in a downtrend. Leave it alone, okay? And let's see if we can find a few more in here that are, that are kind of like that. I guess earlier in the day, it would have been a lot easier to find them. But just pay attention to where they are relative to the. 30 EMA. This is one I was long and got knocked out of recently. Okay, what do you do with this one? Nothing. It's going lower, okay? So that's kind of the bottom line is it's amazing how something so simple can keep you out of a lot of trouble. So if you've never traded crypto before, don't buy anything unless it's A, going up, ideally set up, okay? unless you're in a rip roaring bull market, it's going straight up, okay? And above the 30 EMA, all right? Here's what I'm long, like I just said, I did kind of anticipate this pullback breaking uh, breaking higher a little bit, or triggering, triggering at least. I was gonna put a stop order in, and just kind of got a little anxious and jumped in. Boy, I tell you, if you just, if you just watch me for the first time tonight, you're like this guy, <laughs> I'm gonna go watch the guys with Lamborghinis. They're a lot more exciting, and they, they seem to... <laughs> anyway, don't get me started. Uh, look at Seoul, okay? You can see lots and lots of Langerlite. This is in a bear market, okay? So that's not looking so hot, right? Anyway, I think I kind of made the point that 30-day EMA can really be your best friend. And if all you did was focus on the ones above it for longs and the ones below it for shorts or just avoid the ones below it, 
probably be a safer thing to do, you probably would do okay. All right, let's take a look at, I'm not sure why you would get a coin, Craig, so let's let's take a look at that, and then let's take a look at the stocks, see what's going on in stocks, and then we'll take a look at your picks. Oh, real quick, somebody asked me about this. I don't know if the bow tie is going to show up well enough in the recording, but it's kind of a sloppy bow tie on this rollover. Okay, now you can call this maybe a first thrust down as it thrusted down here a little bit, but it was it's only from like 13 down. But it did look kind of toppy back here. I wouldn't trade. Don't wait until the bow tie forms if it hasn't formed already. Pay attention to something like a first thrust if you want a short or whatever. Now, I don't know if he was referring to this bow tie here, but I prefer them off of major, major, major lows. Okay. So if you go back in time, let's see if this one further back. Okay, now this is somewhat more major lows, but it's still not off of like way, way, way back here, okay? And it's not a perfect bow tie, but it's a um, first thrust, okay? If you go in and look at the CPE trade that I've talked about at nauseum, in this case, right around these multi-year lows in here, just off of multi-year lows, Okay, that's where you want to trade these transitional setups. Or for shorts, you want to trade them off of multi-year high. So just looking at this one, your short setup would have been right here to the downside. Okay. Now they were asking you about how many months you want to look at on a chart. Um six to eight months is what I normally use. And I, I change it up a little bit. I'm still getting used to the new TC. It all depends on your monitor. So I wouldn't say a set six weeks or set six months. But what I do do is I, and I can show you the pretty easy tonight, is I might have six or eight months over here, but I might have three or four years over here, okay? So let's say I'm looking at this CP, let's say it's set up around 100, right? And I'm all excited about the setup seeing over here. And I look over here, it's like, well, wait a minute, Dave, you've got a big mountain of overhead supply. It's getting ready to plow into maybe double think that position, okay? Now let's take a look at a couple of sectors in here and then we'll start looking at your stock picks and answering your other questions. S&P 500 imploded yesterday, as you know. It's, it's been working its way higher. I've been feeling pretty good about it, but now, it's beginning to come back a little bit. I need to work on. I didn't put those in there. Let's see. So it's down to 30 EMA, as you can see. And it's a bit of a bummer because it came back below where it broke out from in here. NASDAQ composite dipped a little today, did recover, but it just chop, chop, chop back and forth. And so NASDAQ is also a bit of a bummer. Let's put a 50 day moving average in here just to see where it is, okay? So yeah, we're well below the 50-day moving average, so we actually have a little daylight there. Uh, somebody was also asking about how long in the weekly. It depends on your monitors. I like to be able to see the bars, and then so if I wasn't doing this presentation, my chart wouldn't be squished down like it is. So I could I, I could probably look at five years or so, but I think my ACP, which is Stock Charts AP, ACP, where I do a lot of that Landry Light type of research, that one is set to two years. And you can see, you know, this is kind of cool, uh, looking at the 50-day. In this case, it would be the 50-week moving average. So look at that. It's been above Landry Light all the way back since last May, okay? Or May of 2020, right? So that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good run, and still going. Knock on wood, right? Okay, yeah. Let me just take a look at that coin real quick, and then we'll, uh, I'll finish up the market analysis. Yeah, we'll come back to that one. So, where's my bell? <laughs> Shame. <Let's see> if <laughs> I need to start ringing that, except that my wife is often home and she's gonna be like, what are you doing in there? Stop all that trading. <laughs> Doesn't sound like you're trading like a champion. 
Energy's managed to make it to new highs, okay? Which is kind of surprising in light of everything, but that's kind of interesting. So that's pretty cool. Maybe we'll get some setups there. Insurance is right at new highs. Banks has been banks have been coming back with a vengeance. I don't know if that's bond related. Let's take a look at bonds real quick. Bonds have been headed lower, as you can see. So maybe bonds down, rates up. Maybe that's pushing banks a little higher. Drugs right at all-time highs. Came right back in. Kind of a little electrocardiogram looking, right? So this is why I'm not very excited about the market. You know, but Dave, you were pretty excited last week. Well, last week was different, right? Last week at Bandcamp, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. You're at brand new highs with health services. All right. That's that looked a lot better a week ago. <laughs> Changes fast, doesn't it? One area that's really a bummer I've been looking at lately is software. Look at software beginning to break down in earnest in here. And that kind of looks like a big picture head and shoulders. And the head shoulder, the, the right shoulder is higher than the left. And those tend to be a little bit more bearish. This is kind of what I call a running head and shoulders because the neckline kind of curves to the top. I don't use a whole lot of classical technical analysis in and of itself, but I do use it to kind of give me a, a, a 30,000 foot view, so to speak, of what's going on. And a lot of times you'll get a bow tie within some sort of major pattern or something like that. And that's that could really help you out. Okay, um, let's shift gears here. Let me, let's take a look at, uh, I won't ring the bell again, I swear. Okay, I got into coin today, but let's go of crypto. Is it in a downtrend? What's going up? Energies, financials, industrials, cryptos in Missouri mode, show me. Yeah, coin is obviously not doing so well today. I wouldn't buy it just because it's at low levels. Um, yeah, just, you're right, Craig, uh, show me mode. Now, if this thing goes down in basis for a long time and makes a bow tie or something, I'd be all over it, right? That'd be great. My coin position is tiny, so it's completely bullshit. Okay, well, you know, all right, you know, if you're, if you do bad behavior and you recognize bad behavior and you do it in a real small way, I know you can't get a little bit pregnant, but if you're willing to live with that, I mean, life, in trading, you know, trading in life is not that not that common. But in some cases it is. Trading like life is making decisions and then living with them. EW first PB from base. All right, we'll take a look at that. But yeah, there's nothing for me to do here because it's going the wrong way for now. All right, let's take a look at EW. Yeah, EW looks pretty good, George. The only thing that's kind of jumping out at me, and I saw this one a while back, let's see, is that it's pulled back into its prior level where it broke, where it's broken out from. So I would leave that one alone. I would immediately write that one off. And I did a, a quick clip today, or parsed it out, I should say. I talked about stock selection and a crash course of stock selection. And, and that's one of the things I talked about is the first pullback after base breakout, but it has to stay above the base, okay? So pass on that one for sure. Happy New Year, Dave. Curious why you prefer candles, all this single color than green and red. It's just what I'm used to. And I started toying around with candles Back in the day when they first came out, I read all the books and, and everything and uh, got really into it. And I, I, then I couldn't make money. I found out I couldn't make money in, in it because they, they were always seeing a pattern. But before I digress too far, in my trading station over there, the candles have defaulted to the red and green. And I just use them like that there. Um, I guess one color makes it easier for me to look at patterns, okay? as opposed to all the green and red, because this is one color. Okay, this is a really, really nice uptrend here. I can just see that, and I'm not too taken back by the different colors, okay? But when, in my in my analysis, one color, in my trading, green and red, and this, there's not really a, a, a concrete reason for that. Hopefully that made sense. Okay, any more? 
Oh, by the way, um, when you, and I think everybody here knows this, but so everybody could benefit and I could actually give one answer to all instead of one answer to one answer to one, which just doesn't seem to be very efficient because it's hard to follow up with six different emails. Uh, if you if you want to ask about a stock or something, unless it's something really, really private, please post it in Facebook. And that way I could answer it there. I could follow up there. And also, because we have such a good group of traders, you guys could chime in. A lot of times, by the time I get to chiming in, chiming in, it's kind of like, okay, what what you know, what John said, what Chris said, what CJ said, whatever. You know, it's like, okay, I agree with you guys. Anyway, so bring them up there. All right, everybody have a great night. If we don't talk to you now and then, have a great weekend. Thank you so much. And may the trend be with you.